I just wanted to call to ask your opinion because I, I think you have a pretty good analysis of what's going on. Um, and I want to ask your opinion about kind of the future of public education in our country because, um, you know, I'm from California and I'm not even from the super liberal part of California, but there's a pretty wide kind of general understanding that, you know, the teachers union sucks. I mean, I don't personally think so. I think that kind of made up in many ways, but um, so even in California, which is kind of seen throughout the country as being more of the kind of leftist, liberal state, um, and we've, I mean, I actually messaged you, I think it was yesterday, about the whole Supreme Court case coming up about agency fees, mm-hmm. so I, I don't know, I'm a little bit worried about kind of the direction we're going with the whole pro-charter Oh yeah, um, taking I'm- away, like human rights and all that jazz. I I share your fears. I mean, I think that there's been a fairly successful pushback on the um, the standardized testing. But yes, we have a real problem. We have a real problem in this regard. And, you know, in this state, uh, ostensibly a very blue state, our wretched governor um, has been a an aggressive proponent of charter schools, largely because of the monies he's gotten from Ken Langone and largely because he's a a spiteful guy. I don't know that he has any real, genuine, actual (laughs) policy um, uh, ideas behind it, frankly. Uh, But it's a real problem because if you can't even criticize it in the nature of our politics, if you cannot criticize that as a right wing idea, it becomes very difficult to fight in the context of our policies and of our politics. That's just the reality. I mean, it is a right-wing conservative idea when it's, I should restate that it is a right-wing conservative idea when it is adopted by the uh, pro corporatist, you know, I mean, let's face it, corrupted by money, democratic politicians, it becomes that much harder to, uh, to politically attack, but you know, people are trying to, And there's no, you know, I mean, and and look, the right has been very effective in demonizing unions. I I don't know what is. I don't know. I mean, there are people who have some optimism that uh, that in the event that agency fees are struck down, uh, that you're referring to this court case in the event that those agencies are struck down. The first one was in Chicago with health uh, home health care workers. It was slightly different because it claimed it basically had to do more with the status of the home health care workers. But there's going to be a frontal assault on those agency fees in this term of the Supreme Court. There's some people who are optimistically saying, well, it's going to help the, the you know, it'll, it'll get the unions to sort of shake off their ossification and um, and will uh, reinvigorate them and be more oriented to providing services for their members and they'll be more aggressive uh, I mean, hope springs eternal, but I think it's going to be very problematic. It's going to starve the unions, and it's going to weaken them further. And so, yeah, I'm not. Um, yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not cheery about the prospect. Because I know that uh, I forgot exactly which election year, but and I think it was New York. There was the whole worker party. Family for work party for workers and families or something, um, and they had the, a lot of unions behind them, and then they ended up giving to Governor Cuomo. Yeah, working and families he party immediately turned his back. Yeah, working families party. Uh, I mean, I mean, they um, uh, the working families party in New York. They're in about six or seven states. Um, they got themselves into a really bad bind with uh, with Cuomo. They're not. Um, you know, they they went down the road where they would be uh, where they would nominate Zephyr Teachout. They decided not to run against Cuomo. She ended up running in the Democratic primary and seriously wounding him. And depending on your perspective, if that was the agenda of the Working Families Party to maintain their relationship with the unions. I mean, look, here's the thing. The Working Family Parties are very supported, are very much supported by the, the big unions in this state. And the problem is is that as a union, you have a very transactional relationship with the governor. 
So it is a very dangerous thing for you to get on the wrong side of the governor in these situations. The Working Families Party couldn't get on the wrong side of the unions because they would have to fundamentally change uh, who they are and what they represent. I mean, there was always an option, I think, for them to become sort of more of a creative class style entity. Uh, but they didn't want to lose their union roots. And the fact is, is that the union's agenda did not fully align with uh, what I think the Working Families Party's agenda would have been, but for the fact that they are and largely dominated by the unions. But in the end, I think, you know, you had a good result. At the very least, uh, Cuomo's aspirations for a presidential run across the country were seriously neutralized. Um, he may not uh, think so, but they were. And so, um, you know, in the end, that was effective. In the future, hopefully the Working Families Party will be strong enough that they can actually stand up against a, uh, a guy like Cuomo. But that remains to be seen. All right, got to jump. I appreciate the call.